everyone. Here we are. Hi, everyone. Just the it's, season. It's, it's a chain gang here. It's December and it is holiday time. So what does that conjure up for everybody? Parties, gift giving, obligations, get together, family members and friends you want to see, maybe those you don't want to see or be, to spend time with, uh, missing departed loved ones, stress, pressure of spending, and how can you and others enjoy it all? So we're going to go over this for the month with different different topics on it. And the first one we're going to um, talk about is obligations. And of course, obligations, what does that conjure up? But anxiety. So obligations and that, I mean, December, of course, we have, you know, Christmas, but there's all the other holidays too. There's Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. I mean, this is regarding everyone. It's all encompassing all of us. I don't know about you, Linda, but every time I thought, you know, December with the holidays coming, I mean, it's cold here on the East Coast, but you know, the holidays, what it always meant to me, what I liked even if it was a false pretense, I mean, the music was playing and it just, to me, was joy and peace. And I liked people smiling and just being together. It just was like uplifting, you know? Yeah, I like the cold weather too with the Christmas season. It was just being all together and, and that whole part of it. But then we lay on, you know, it gets commercialized, which of course it does. And, you know, we want to give and, and do and you know, I don't know. I don't know how you I'll tell you what's hard though is children. Children get so spoiled sometimes. And I think each generation you want to do more than what you yeah. have. Yeah. And if you yeah. didn't have it, then you want to do it. But my parents, you know, they were they didn't have a lot of money. The one good thing about my dad, even though he could be pretty cruel, he always made a big deal out of Christmas. And he didn't really have Christmas when he was young because they were so poor. But he always made a big deal. It was very festive. I remember the good smell of the food cooking, you yeah, know, the tree. Memories. We were all so excited. It's those it's those memories that we we bring up and what it represents and everything. It's just being, you know, really together. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If I opened up a present and gave a scowl, my happy butt would have been flown across the room, probably right through a wall. You know, my kids, my kids, they would look, Jacob would look and say, is that it? <laughs> but now as an adult, he's wonderful. And he's the most generous of all my children. Well, Jeff, Nicole's very generous too, but he's, he loves to give presents. And I, and I really enjoy I that. like to give also, and I love to think about what the person likes, you know what I mean? Or what they're, yeah, you're very good at gift giving. I like to do that. And, um, oh, geez, I remember <laughs> my my second marriage my daughter was uh she was at that age you know she was like 14 15 and she oh, was, she wasn't happy so she took my now ex shopping she picked out the ugliest things she got this ugly he gave me this sweater that was like this furry ugly ugly color and you know of course I'm opening it it was our first time or solitude. I'm going, oh, how nice. Yeah, was, but did she think it was ugly? Yeah, she did it on purpose. She sat there and she looked at me, giving me the eye like, hmm, because she knew I would hate it and that I, I, you know, it was. Yeah, but you bad. kept the smile going. Yeah, I mean, when we were little, dad would give us like five bucks a piece and take us into like a Walmart and you could pick out gifts for everybody. Like we'd always get, a, get my brother a bag of army man. It was like 70 cents. And he would, we'd always give my mom lipstick and it would always be like purple. <laughs> but my parents made a big deal out of it that they were just so thrilled. Years ago, I mean, things are so much simpler. And, you know, we rush, as we talked before about energy and everything speeding up around, right? And it's true. I mean, I remember back growing up the same period like you did, you know, they waited until Thanksgiving, the towns before they would do before anything went out for Christmas, it was the day after that, you know, they got it done and everything got done and it was wonderful. Now we have to set up everything in August. I mean, it's crazy. You know, this is like the first year, but I got to tell you something, girlfriend, I went online and I got all my gifts. I went online and did it. And I also got a lot of toys. I usually give either to the Salvation Army or the fire department down the street, toys for tots. 
Yeah. Uh, I even got those on uh, some special they were having at Amazon. No, that's great. But I do like, you know, doing that is fine. And I've done a lot of, I think because of COVID too, everybody's been doing more online. And, and because I had a business, a store, brick and mortar, you know, and it's hard to be a small business and survive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like to support the local you know, shops. Um, so even if you buy online, it's nice to go into for the holiday just to hear the music and see every see it all. And yeah, maybe pick up little things here and there. Step over the homeless. Yeah. Anyway, so um, so going back to what does this represent for people? Like, you know, you feel obligated for gift giving and that. And if everybody's crunched financially, like a lot of people Most are. Most people. You know, there's different ways that you could give. You just don't have to think about something you know, material on that. You could give your gift of time, right? You could yeah. spend time with your older family members or neighbors or whatever. And you could make things or teach your kids or little ones how to make things, how to make cards. Well, remember when our kids were young, my kids always brought home something for me, get ready to put under the tree, a picture of them, that uh, something that they made or some stick thing that they made from their own hands. And I thought that you could put it on the tree. Those are the things that those, yeah, you keep them and everything. Yeah. And like the decorating of that, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on stuff. Remember people used to pop popcorn and string it or then. No, well, we I, never did that. Yeah. yeah. I pay for someone to put Christmas lights. I've never had Christmas. My dad used to do it before he broke his back and then he stopped. I've always wanted Christmas lights. All my ex-husbands never to put up Christmas lights. Finally, I pay a guy. He comes out once a year and he, he puts them up and he takes them down. Ah, how much do they charge for that? Oh, Is it it's expensive. It's expensive, yeah. I know they have that around here in town too, but I was always curious what it was. I never looked into it. But, you know, there's there's ways of um, doing gifts. Like I said, you can make things, you can bake things, you could cook things. Did you already do your tree? Yes. You got it done the first week of December. Yes, it was actually before then. It's been up. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. I knew you would do a beautiful tree. I have those same birds. That's only one. Then I have in my living room, I do a Lennox. My, a friend of mine gave me Lennox ornaments every year for like, I don't know, 10, 13 years. And I always wanted to do a white tree with pearls. So it's a little, it's on the table. Oh, God, it's good. I love it. I'll send you a picture. I used to get the Disney for oh, my yeah. boys. Yeah. I collected Disney and then just one day they weren't Disney anymore. So I just gave them all away. Yeah. Yeah. I used to get the um, dated ornaments for my kids every year. That's another thing to do for, uh, as far as traditions and that. I, like, I like my babies when they were born, their birth year and a baby carriage and stuff. So going back to that, like, you know, giving um, gifts of time, if you can't afford things, there's things that you could do inexpensively. You could take kids to the museum, to the zoo, things that you could spend time together. I know here where I live, we have, um, there's different, it's called like Festival of Lights. Yeah, they had, they used to have that. You know, since COVID, a lot of things have changed. We have a zoo out here that you can drive through with the Christmas. Yeah, decoration. they set it up with the decorations. That's nice to do. And that doesn't cost. If it does, it's oh. minimal. It's, you know, so you could do things like that just to right. and make memories and take the pressure, take the, as much pressure off. And the other thing is if you're by yourself, and I know I, it's very sad, but I know a lot of people that have lost uh, family members or, and or children aren't talking to them anymore. Mm -hmm. go down don't sit by yourself go down and volunteer and work for uh wherever they feed people True. food banks and stuff True. yep when you give we talked about this before for during thanksgiving i bring yeah we bring it up again because you'd be surprised when you do something like that and you leave and you really feel filled because the end there's an energy exchange you're giving and as you're doing you're, you're and they're very appreciative yeah. but it's not even about them appreciating it you just feel you did something yeah. And it's, it's doing it without, even with the, you know, gift giving it, you know, if you're going to do it, do it without expectation. Yeah. When we expect, I mean, I found for myself, we, we're all human. So we go into that realm, but when you really do it and just do it freely and then you surprise at what you get back. <laughs> right. Do but it we can't strings. base our whole life on a holiday, <laughs> Hanukkah or whatever. It's nice to have family and it's nice to have that, but some people just aren't into holidays and that's okay too. 
I spent many times by myself down when I lived in Laguna Beach and I didn't mind, it didn't bother me. Let's go back to like what this is about obligations. So we put pressure on ourselves because we do feel obligated that if you grew up in a family that didn't have anything or someone, you know, a mother or relative that did it over the top and you're trying to live up to that and you fall short of it, then you get anxiety, you get stressed out that it has to be a certain way. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be, you could do it a different way. Just create something different and make it simple. If it's not fun, don't do it. <laughs> That's what I say, especially at this, you know, folks, as you get older, especially at this stage, you're like, if it's not fun, it doesn't give you joy. Just skip over it. And don't do it. So even getting together with, I like parties. I like to get, it's not so much a party, but I like to get people together because it's that. Yeah. And, you know, some people aren't, party people or whatever don't want to but you know it's if you enjoy people or not and you could keep it simple you know I go over the top with food and everything and creating because well you know there again having the tree doing the decoration I'm a Taurus so I like I like things of beauty and I like to look at things and I like color and I like bling and good food but that's me and I do it for me it brings me happiness but there again you could keep things simple so a lot of times People come here and I know probably with my family too, and they see what I do and then they feel like they can't live up to it. So they never invite me because they feel like they have to replicate. And that's not true. I don't care. You give me a potato chip and a glass of water. I'd be fine. As long as we're together. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so we, I think we put those pressures on ourselves to be a certain Can way. I ask you a question real quick? Sure. Maybe I shouldn't ask this. But, you know, what do you call those when people bring their own dish? Oh, like you bring something over? Yeah. Yeah. A potluck? A, like a potluck? A pot I have a little problem with potlucks. Do you? Because sometimes the way people live, you worry about the food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. This it's is where, that. okay, we're going to go. You know, the prayer before a meal. And I think we talked about this. I think, I believe that the prayer within, throughout, I don't care, religions, whatever you want to call it. I think they did that because eons ago when people were in the desert or wherever they lived and it, it was like, bless it to take out the toxic stuff that won't kill, that it won't kill us. <laughs> so yeah, talking about that. So people have phobia, you know, you can have OCD and like uh, about things. And I, I understand what you're talking about. I was at a group at a workshop once, right? And I'm talking to this woman and her and her son just, well, she had money. They just flew in from Australia. They booked it like the week before. And this was like out in New Hampshire, right? I mean, she had to pay Boku bucks for that. She was the nicest woman. And there was a buffet, like you said, and it was be like vegan. And, so, and me, I have, well, what's that? What's that? It's like, you know, I'm like, hmm. And <laughs> she said, oh, I was in a village once. I don't know what country. And she said, there was a bowl and it had flies on it and she ate she ate uh they shared and she was just part of the community and they ate and she was fine see yeah I, it's all here it's what we project on it i think if we project we're going to be sick or whatever that's no but there's some people who, are, who really live like pigs i uh, yeah, yeah they don't wash their hands they they let their animals up you on can't, you can't think about that you can't so that's why I'm not very good with those. Uh, you know, I'm happy to bring something that is pre-done at from Safeway, you know, sandwiches that are already in the tray that professionals have put together. But I have a hard time with, unless I go to the person's house, you know. Well, I even have a hard time now too, especially since COVID, you know, at buffets and everything, right? Because you see people in buffets and they stick their... I remember going to round table and I wanted a salad. And they had these young people that were special needs. And the kid was putting his thumb and finger in there. And I, I looked at him, I said, honey, you can't, you can't be doing that. But then I don't want a salad anymore. So, you know, doing, you know, a party, you don't have to put a lot of stress on yourself. You could keep it simple. And I was going to say, you can have people bring over dishes, but. Yeah. Well, people that, you know, good friends that, you know, that are clean and wash their hands. My mother was a stickler and my mother washed every pot she took out because she was she was raised in a very poor atmosphere and and rats could get in. They would walk through the pot. So that's why you always wash the pot. We can never understand what the hell her phobia was. My father was a first army cook. Oh, my God. 
and we didn't have a dish. You know, of course, we didn't have a dishwasher. So you had a scrub. He goes, and he would take a fork and he would hold it up and he'd look at it. And he goes, you have to clean in between, you know, the fork times, you know, in between. But, you know, why? Because back then they're being in the service, you know, as you know, being in, in medical, you know, and all that bacteria grow. Oh, you yeah. Clean that good. And then somebody could be sick and you pass they it They didn't out. have dishwashers. You could wipe out a whole... Back then, I don't know if they did. That oh. was, you know. That's that the cool was, thing about a dishwasher. It really sterilizes. I go crazy with my husband because my husband likes to, you know, and I don't think, you know, he, he walked <laughs> me with the germaphone. Stick it in the dishwasher to sterilize it. Especially if you're sick and coughing. It's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I made a beautiful salad, a chicken salad with, sliced tomatoes and and this and that and I had it all ready to sit down and have my lunch and my little boy Jake came from outside filthy dirty from dirt up to here through his hands were just plain dirt and he looks at my salad and he puts his finger on it and takes something and says mm, mommy that salad's good I said here take it so this is a fun, I know we're getting off track here but a funny story when I met my now husband it was in the summer and we're in the car and I had my bottle of water. <laughs> he took a drink and I'm drinking my water. Right. And all of a sudden he comes, he goes over, he doesn't ask me. And he goes and he takes, he drinks it. He puts it down. And I went, mm. I, didn't say I don't thing. drink it behind other people. Uh, you say one, I didn't say one thing, but I did not touch, you know, I had just met him, you know, and I'm like, yeah. Mm. And he's like, what the heck? You kiss somebody and you can't. I go, no. And you know where that comes from? Like what? I share a, a drink. I'll take a sip of someone's drink even. Yeah. And water. It's from that movie, The Color Purple, when Whoopi Goldberg, I don't know if you remember that scene, that guy that was mean to her and beat her and everything. And he said, get me my lemonade. And she went, well, I have to tell you, and she did a... <sighs> in his lemonade and he drank and I, oh, that just hit me. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh. so yeah. from that I'm like, mm, mm, mm. yeah. <laughs> so there again, so going back to like a party sharing with people, just keep it simple. Everybody could contribute or just make it easy, folks, make it easy. So how do we balance all this? Cause this is about, again, balancing out our stressors and so forth. And, you know, Remember to take time for yourself. Um, do self-care during the holiday time as much as you can. And I said, if you could afford getting a massage or a facial, um, what I love are Epsom salt soaks. If you have a bathtub, put Epsom salt. Um, after you get like, you know, because I do energy work and I would tell people after a session, go home and go in the tub and do Epsom salt because it does, it, it pulls the toxins out of your, your body and it relaxes your muscles. And if you don't have a bathtub and, you know, for older folks getting in and out of a tub, <laughs> you get in and can't get out. Anyways, um, get a basin and you could do your feet. Actually, I did, I did it today. I gave myself a pedicure and I, oh, soaked, awesome. I soaked my feet in Epsom and it just, it, rela it relaxes you. It really feels That's good. Great. Because we need relaxing these next few days because there's some planetary right. aspect that's all weird. You know, and then, you know, listen to soothing music. You know, music is really good. Oh, I love a good Andy Williams Christmas songs. Yeah, Dean Crosby, Dino Martin. Yeah. Then just remember to breathe through it all and, and enjoy. And if it's not fun, don't do it. You don't know? do it. Don't do it. So... This was wonderful, and we're going to sign off, and you remember what to say? Short and sweet. Be no, I, I didn't write it down. You be know. the change. Be the change you want to see, and from our hearts to yours, in total love, balance it out, and peace, because if you have inner peace, you have everything, and from our hearts to yours, we love you, be we safe, love you. and enjoy, and love. We'll see you for the next episode. The next episode. Bye-bye. Okay. Cheers.